everyone, I'm Zath and welcome back to my channel for another manga haul video. This manga haul is for the end of 2019, a little delayed but here nonetheless. You can check out my previous month's manga haul in the link below. Now without further ado, let's get to it. Starting us off this month is Astra Lost in Space Volume 1. Uh, this title took me completely by surprise. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. The story starts us off with a group of high school kids scheduled for a vacation in space. Just them, no adults. Apparently the future is a lot more lax with parental supervision. But when the kids get to their vacation spot, they are attacked by an unknown orb. Once like the orb touches them, it throws them into deep space. Luckily for them, there is a ship they can get to nearby to try to figure out what is going on with them. What really has me excited for the next volume, though, is the huge cliffhanger Volume 1 ends on. So I will definitely be picking up the rest of this series very soon and see how everything plays out. Next up is Demon Slayer Volume 8. As you all know by now, I love this series, but this volume in particular made me love it even more. I don't want to go into too many spoilers, but this volume packed a heavy emotional punch. Demon Slayer is a traditional battle manga, and any fan of the genre knows that your favorite character won't be able to win each and every fight, and sometimes those losses come at a heavy cost. There was a particular panel in this volume that was heartbreaking. Tanjiro starts crying and says, Every time I learn something new, I learn how much more there is that I don't know. This was intense for me because it calls back to a similar panel in one of my favorite manga and anime, Yu Yu Hakusho, where Yusuke is frustrated, and no matter how strong he gets, there's always someone out there stronger and gearing up for a fight. Seeing the Demon Slayer characters in tears and realizing this, even someone as steadfast as Tanjiro has moments of frustration, is some great and powerful storytelling. The characters all feel real and their pain fresh and impactful. It's moments like these that are reasons why I will always be picking up the next volume of Demon Slayer. Keeping with the emotional scenes for this month, The Promised Neverland Volume 12. There is a chapter in this particular volume that is entirely from Phil's point of view, and it's absolutely heartbreaking and terrifying at the same time. I don't want to go too deep in spoiler territory, but again, the emotional emotions of this chapter is just perfect. Most series don't pan around to characters outside of the main action, but in this chapter we get to see a glimpse of life going on elsewhere and the struggles taking place. Not every battle is a physical one. Here we catch a glimpse of a more emotional struggle and the mental fortitude to keep moving forward. This volume again leaves at a very highly comatic scene, and as always I can't wait to read the next volume, and I'm just glad that Phil got his own chapter, because he's one of my favorite characters. Moving on to lighter reads, we have An Incurable Case of Love, Volume 1. I was pretty excited to read the series when it was first announced. I don't think there are many manga out there that take place in a medical hospital setting, at least not that I read. Um, so the story starts us off with a girl who ends up selling, saving this uh, elderly woman's life after being aided by a young doctor. And then her dream from then on is to become a nurse to one day meet this doctor again. However, when she finally does make it as a nurse and meets the object of her affections, he turns out to be quite different than she remembered. And he rejects her openly in front of the nursing staff, so... Interesting start. Um, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I thought I was going to, but a light read, and I definitely think I'll be picking up the next volume just to see if it gets better or if it stays much of the same, but I really love the, the cover of this, uh, this series, so that alone is pretty interesting. But yeah, I'll be, I'll be picking up the next volume to see where it goes. Next up, we have volumes 4 and 5 of Siren. These two volumes were really great. They introduced the reader to new characters and setting some pretty awesome plot twists and battle scenes up. The, the battle scenes are just, they're so, they're so great. I mean, I don't know why more people don't talk about Siren. I know it's older, but man, yeah, the battle scenes and the story are really gearing up, so I'm looking forward to the, the next volume. Next up, we have volume 11 of Takane and Hana. Really like the cover of this volume. It's back to the, the falling theme. Um, this volume did get surprisingly dark. It still has the humor and comedy that the series is known for, but it definitely was a bit more on the serious side for this volume. I was happy to see the story did pick up right after the previous volume, and uh, the the last chapter of this volume was <laughs> was pretty hilarious, because each time I think Takai has topped the amount of ridiculous he can do, he finds a way to do something even more ridiculous. So definitely looking forward to the next volume. 
After that, we have Volume 5 of Full Metal Alchemist, the Full Metal Editions. Great cover. As I said before, um, Viz does a great job at quality-wise of this publication. My only gripe and issue is they took this, the line off the, the bar? Like, there used to be, like, a bar down here of all the volumes, so I don't know... I don't know why they did that. I mean, it's a small gripe because, I mean, these hardbacks are great. Um, but just, yeah, I don't, no idea why. But definitely be picking up um, more of these full metal editions as they are released. After that, we have our dining table. Uh, this one shot was so heartwarming. The story starts us off when a man who lives alone offers his lunch to a hungry little boy in the park. And this guy is pretty awkward about sharing meals, but the boy and his younger brother invite him over to teach them how to make food. And slowly but surely, the characters begin to appreciate food and the company that goes along with eating together. I really love the story and pacing, like how they delivered it. You know, no, not rushing. Nothing changes instantaneously, but gradually over time, you know, more fluid as the characters spend more time together and become more involved in each other's lives. All in all, very cute story, highly recommend, and I really love the artwork, it was just so, it's just cute and adorable, and it definitely goes with the story. Next up is The Golden Sheep, Volume 2. This volume continues the story of the two runaway friends settling in Tokyo and finding pleasures in the simplest thing. Man, I really, I love the art of this, and the, the slice of life that's more serious you know, darker undertones, but man, yeah, the artwork really sells it, and I cannot wait for the next volume to see where it goes. Wrapping it up for this month is Road Queen, Eternal Road Trip to Love. This manga, again, I never thought I would enjoy it as much as I did uh, immediately after finish reading um, this. I read it again. I really enjoyed the heartwarming romantic comedy that this title is, and I think more people would... Would too if they if they gave it a chance and checked it checked it out. So if you uh, if you want more detailed review, I did a whole video on it. So that link will be in the description below. But definitely pick up Road Queen. It's great. The art is amazing, and I definitely think that you will enjoy it. And that's gonna do it for my end of the year haul. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, if you have any opinions on these series or any additional recommendations for new series, let me know in the comments below. I'm Zath. Have a good day.